All right, we're into module two now. And uh, module two is deciding how it is we're going to leave, where we're going to go, and how we're going to do it. And I just want to go back over a couple points in, in module one was how we determined when it was time to leave. And uh, what we've determined is we, we learned in module one how to tap into that inner GPS and really listen to that inner voice that's, that's really trying to guide us. I call it an inner GPS because it's trying to turn us in, in the right direction. It's trying to help us. But until we tune into that, we're kind of lost. So anyway, so now we've, we've made the decision. We've made the decision that we're going to leave. Um, we can't stay in, in this religious organization any longer. And it could be for a number of reasons. In, in the video one, you know, I talked about prophecy, that, that the, the witness organization uh, had certain prophecies and dates. And, and then when they passed, um, I felt that they were out of integrity with me. And I had to, when I tapped into my inner GPS, it was to the one I to thy self be true, thine own self be true. So I had to be true to that, that, that they didn't apologize, that they didn't say they're sorry, they just moved from one prophecy to another and expect us all to just follow blindly, and I couldn't do it. But I just want to say there, there could be a, a hundred reasons for leaving uh, your religious ideal. You could have been a victim of abuse, sexual abuse. Um, that's really rampant today. Um, it could be a number of reasons. Um, I don't even want to go into them all, but you will have your particular reason for, for journeying out or not being able to continue on in this organization. And I don't know what that particular thing is, but when you're ready, you're ready. And what I want to say about being ready, um, the thing that I had to discover was that when I was ready, it didn't mean anybody else was ready. When these prophecies passed, this generation prophecy, the 1975 prophecy, when the Jehovah's Witnesses said the world was going to end, and it did not, and we moved past 75, then we moved into the generation prophecy of 70 or 80 years from 1914, which would put us into uh, the late 80s. That passed, and it didn't come to fruition. Well, I began to tune into that inner GPS, and I decided it was time to leave. And I was kind of thinking that, you know, other people were coming out with me. I thought maybe five million people were leaving. And that didn't happen. Basically, it was me that left. And, you know, I had to leave by myself. And I had to determine how I was going to leave. Was I going to drift away? Was I just going to stop making meetings? And uh, when people would come up to me, you know, I would say, you know, oh, I just haven't been feeling well. And then they see me again. Oh, I just have been working a lot. And, yeah, you know, on and on. You know, that was one way of leaving. And, and that way it is okay. Because the other way to leave is the way that I left. And I'm not saying this is right for you. It was right for me. But I didn't want to be out of integrity with myself, which means... I didn't want to just continue to tell people and make excuses all on the journey of, you know, I stopped going to meetings because I've been working a lot. I've had to work Saturday so I can't be out in service or whatever reason that I had. I didn't want to do that. And so what I did was I did it sort of hardcore. I went into the organization and I wrote a letter and I put it in the, uh, mailed it directly to the brothers. And it says, I do not want to be part of the organization anymore. And uh, they took the letter. They read it to the congregation. In fact, they read it to all the congregations. They sent a letter to all the congregations that I was in so that I would be completely cut off and thrown out in the world on my head. And so this was hardcore, guys. This, it's, I got to tell you, here, here's the dilemma. Leaving is very difficult. You know why it's really difficult? Because a lot of people are going to be hurt, pissed off, totally messed up, and you got to face them. They're going to say, where on earth are you going? Because you know something? Your baptism was a big thing. You're coming into the truth, whatever it is, Mormonism, whatever, was a big thing. These are huge things. The whole family celebrates and are overjoyed. But the whole family also is disappointed. 
the whole family becomes pissed off. The whole family even rejects you. In, in my faith, they said, throw the wicked man out from amongst you. And so I'm literally cut off without any communication. I'm literally thrown out. And so I want you to be able to, pre to prepare for that. And on the other side of it, if you stay, you're even in worse trouble. Because if you stay, you deny the truth about who you are and what you stand for. And you begin to die. So you can stay in the organization and decide to stay, but inside your soul will just shrivel up and die because you don't believe it anymore. You've come to the point where you've seen it for what it is. And that could be, like I said, a number of things for anybody. So here you are at a huge precipice. You know, you're going to either drift away, which is just fine. If you want to drift away, you might even move away. And uh, that's sometimes a little softer, a little easier. It's sometimes easier for people just to see their old brothers and sisters and say, hey, you know, I haven't been around. I've been working or whatever. And, uh, <clears throat> and just leave it at that and move on. And they'll think, oh, you just fell away and you got weak and you're just a weak Christian. Um, that's one way. Um, the cutting off is a whole nother thing. And, and, and what I want to say about that, if you decide to go that route where you leave and you decide that I, I just can't be a part of it, I've got to tell them the truth, I've got to say this is not truth, and you decide to just cut them off, well, you need to have some family or some friend or somebody who's not your religious thing, like me, I was a Jehovah's Witness. So I needed to have somebody, somebody at my work, somebody maybe in another religion, uh, what, another faith that was my friend that I could talk to because in leaving, you're going to go on a roller coaster ride of depression. Why did I leave? Maybe I should go back, even though there's no going back. You can go back and you'll see that it just won't have any life to it anymore. You just be going back and going through the motions. So you have to move forward. You've got to move forward here. And that's why I wanted to tell you to prepare for this journey. And the journey is going to be one of being a little bit alone. You're going to be alone for a while. Um, you don't have the big parties. You don't have the, the big social gathering. You don't have the big family anymore. In fact, they're completely torn away from you. My Jehovah's Witness experience was that there were people that I knew for 15 and 20 years that never talked to me again the day that they read that letter. And so you've got to be prepared for some alone time. And, you know, maybe, you know, going into some other religion, it's time for you to investigate. Maybe you want to do that beforehand. But the thing that I want to say is you, is you will want to prepare a little bit before that because it's quite devastating when your parents and your family and your religion rejects you. And as in the case with Jehovah's Witnesses, you're thrown out on your head, you're cut off, the door is slammed behind you, it's bolted shut, and they say, shame on you. And so, you know, if you need any kind of financial help, if you need any kind of moral support, anything, they're not going to be there. You're out. You left. So you want to prepare for that. You want to get some friends outside. Maybe it's, there's somebody who you talk about these things with already. You're talking about the discontent that you've had. Maybe you don't believe it's the truth anymore. Maybe you have a best friend that you share these things with. You want to make sure to do that and keep those friendships alive. And I can tell you something. The one thing you're going to find out is that there's a lot of good people out there. They really care about you. And you know what? And they also know where you've been. They know you've been bottled up in an idea. They know that you've been separated from everyone else outside of your religion. They know you've been cut off. They know you've been indoctrinated if you're a Jehovah's Witness. They know you've been through hell. And they know that when you're cut off, most people know that it's the most cruel experience you've ever had to go through. Your own family saying, I want nothing to do with you. You're out. You're gone. Your family's gone. Your, your brothers and sisters are gone. The tribe is gone. In a way, in a, in a real weird sense, the God, the Jehovah that you used to know is gone because, uh, you know, you left that idea that they gave to you about God. You're not really separated from God, and you'll find out that out too. As you journey down this road, you'll find out that God never left you. 
you're going to find friends and you're going to say, wow, there's some good people out there. There's some people that weren't in my face that are, faith that are like angels. Oh my God, they really care about me. They would let me stay with them if I needed. You're going to find there's angels everywhere. You're going to find God everywhere. You're going to see God everywhere. I promise you. But you've got to go through this initial shock. I don't know. It's like what shit. It's shock and awe. It's drastic. You're cut off. And so I'll leave that up to you, how you leave. I don't think it matters. I'm not going to say my way was better than your way. If you drift, fine. That works for you. Go for it. If you cut it off and you want to tackle it hardcore and be cut off, God bless you there too. But just know that there's no other way. And this isn't only Jehovah's Witness. This is Mormon. This is so many other faiths. It don't matter if it's Catholic. If you left the tribe, you left the tribe. It's bad news. But the fact of the matter is, if you stay, it's bad news for your soul. Like I said, your soul begins to die. Your soul begins to shrink. You start losing your zest for life. And you're here to bring life to life. Christ in us, hope of glory to bring Christ into this moment. That's what we're supposed to do. And just the fact that, that um, we're dying inside, we're not going to be able to do that. So we really have no choice but to move forward. And uh, we're told sometimes if we want the truth, if we want to be free, we have to follow that as opposed to our families and uh, pastors or whoever they are that are telling us to stay put. We really do have to honor that inner voice within ourselves. So that's what this video is about. Do some preparation. Um, if you're a young guy, you may want to maybe have some friends that, that you could talk to. Maybe another family. You could say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm a, about to leave my faith. I'm a Jehovah's Witness and I can't go on and I don't know what my parents are going to do or how they're going to respond. And uh, I might need a place to stay. You might talk to your grandmother, your uncle, whoever. But let somebody know. Let somebody know that you're having a crisis of conscience. Let them know that you just can't go on anymore and why. And, and tell them you need their help. Ask for help. And just watch. Just watch the, the good nature of people. Watch all the people that come forward. You're not going to lose your job. You're not going to fall apart like they tell you you're going to. You're going to go back to the world and return to the dog that's returned to the mire. That's not going to happen. You're going to find angels and people and friends and support like you've never have. So I'm pulling for you. You know, go forward, make this decision, hold on, and ride with the wave. It's going to be up and down for a little while. Um, and we'll talk more about that in the next video. Um, where we talk about how to get some of these ingrained hooks out because in order to break totally free, now we've got to dismantle some of these ideals and some of this ideology that's been programmed in you for so long that says we have the truth and they don't and death to all those who leave and all this stuff. <clears throat> we got to do some reprogramming of our own and we got to get inside ourselves and look at those things that we believe to be true and start dismantling them so that we can move forward because that's the next step. So, you know, we've determined um, that it's time to leave and now we've determined uh, how we're going to leave or we're going to determine that, you're going to determine that, and then next, how to get these hooks out, how to get these ideals out of your mind so they're not driving you mad because you, you, you can't be outside and your mind inside. It's your compartmentalize. It won't work. So I'm pulling for you. I know you're going to experience what I experience, that this wasn't the end of me leaving this religion. This wasn't the end of, you know, Jehovah didn't come down and crush my head under his feet like they told me. Um, that's where the gnashing of their teeth and crushing of their head is going to be under Jehovah's feet for those who leave. It didn't happen to me, and it won't happen to you. You're going to find those were fear tactics, and you know, a lot of times you just got to move through the fear, feel the fear, and go through anyway. So anyway, looking forward to this next module about getting the hooks out. How do we get the hooks out? This is very crucial to your success in health and happiness for the rest of your life. Okay, thanks so much.